Hello, my name is Lewis Coxall, and today I'm joined by Honey Landry. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Liz. Um, <clears throat> so what are you What are you most famous for? What are you known for? Um, I'm most famous for being the first girl drummer in a pop band. Who got you into music? Um, well, we used to hang around um, a lake at Hines Park, and there was loads of fellas around. They used to play guitars, and that was at the time when Skiffle was in, and and um, that, that kind of music, um, and guys played guitars over the lake there, and we used to sit there late in the evenings on summer evenings, and I used to go with my brother. Okay. Um, and there was a guy there that started up a group, and he asked my, my brother was quite interested in bass guitar, and he taught my brother how to play bass guitar, and I used to follow my brother around, um, and I used to go to all their practices, you know, practice sessions and everything else, and I just got totally interested in drums. Um, the guy that used to play for them, he had to pack it in because he was training to be um, an accountant, um, so he had to go to night school on nights that they were doing their practicing and so forth, so they, I just sat at the drums and I said, well, can I, can I have a go? And basically it just all went from there. So why drums over anything else? I don't know. It's just something that I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. It's just something that I just took to it. Did you learn another instrument before or after to drum? Um, I learned a little guitar. Um, I wouldn't say that I was that proficient at guitar, but I can knock out a tune. Why are you called Honey Lounge? What, what was the reason? After the Honeycombs. We got named the Honeycombs because the band were originally called the Sheratons. But then um, a guy in Pi, because uh, Pi took us over, um, he suggested that we change the name and um, called us the Honeycomb. So, Honeycombs, Honey Lantry. Were there any sort of like memorable arguments over like, you know, song names or songwriting? Uh, no, most of the songwriting was done by our two managers um, who are very well known. Um, Howard and Blakely, songwriters. They've sent, They've written for Elvis Presley. Um, they've written. They we we found Dave D. Dozy Meeking Teacher, which was a sixties band. You probably wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't know them. Clue. No. Um, loads of bands. That, so yeah, everything was theirs that were recorded. All um, their songs. Did, did you go on tour? Yeah, we went round the world a couple of times. We went um, um, most countries. We went to. We, we very much travelled band of the 60s. Where was your favourite place to tour? Um, I liked Australia. I liked Perth. Um, I couldn't honestly say there was one in particular place because I think uh, when you're touring, you don't you don't see it as a tourist um, because you're sort of you're darting from one thing to another. And, um, but I like Thailand and all those countries. Is there something you? Would have or wish you could have done differently during the I break. wished I'd have saved the money. <laughs> I wished I'd have been a bit, uh, yeah, I think I wished I'd have been more sensible with the money. Being as drumming in when you started wasn't sort of heard of by females, mm -hmm. were your friends and family supportive at the beginning of the Oh, yeah, my, particularly my parents, they were very supportive. My dad used to say to me, because quite honestly, when I used to sit there and rehearse, I didn't think about the. I didn't think, I didn't think. Gosh, I'm doing this and I'm a girl. Um, it was only when I actually went to play um, in a pub called the Mild May Tavern at Hackney with the band that it sort of dawned on me. Gosh, everyone's looking at me. Uh, but and that's when I thought, you know. This hasn't been done before. There hasn't been many girl drums. Um, there, there's been girl bands in, at the time. I, I can't think of the name. Ivy Benson was the name, but they were like big bands. She played. She played drums. Fantastic drummer she was. But it was a big band that she had. You know, saxes and things like. Were not pop bands. Um, but yes, my family were. My my parents pushed me all the way. What do you think made the band such a success? Um, um, I think um, Have I the Right was such a um, catchy song. I think in I think in hindsight, whoever had recorded it, it would have been a hit. 
Whether it would have been a number one or not, I don't know. But I think also the other two reasons were our lead singer, Dennis, Denny Dell. I mean, he, he had such a fantastic voice. And they said that I was a gimmick, but I wasn't a gimmick. But I was a gimmick, I suppose, in respect that I was a girl drummer. So people look on look upon it as a gimmick. But I played on everything. I played on all... Um, I played on every single track that we ever recorded. Name a high or a low that you remember the most during your career. Um, I think doing the London Palladium must have been the biggest high because you stand there on that stage and you 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 tend to think of all the people um, that have stood there, you know, Frank Sinatra and all the old. Tony Bennett's all the greats and um, a bit daunting really but um, I have to say I think yeah I think that was probably the biggest high the biggest low um, I think um, I think when Dennis died our lead singer died uh, you know that was because we all got back together years afterwards and um there was four originals still in the band, which was lovely. And we did it for about 15 years. And then, um, let's say, poor old Den passed away. And then I think all of us felt we couldn't do it without Den anymore, so we don't do it anymore now. What other female icons were around when you started and did they influence you in any way? For example, your fashion, your hairstyle, the way you dress? Um, well, it was the 60s, wasn't it? Um, there was so much... Uh, Carnaby Street, um, all the short skirts, that's when it all started. So um, we couldn't help being influenced by everything that was going, because it all started in the 60s. I mean, it's all evolved, it's all gone round, it's all come back full circle. Everyone's wearing short skirts again, pointed shoes. and um, Yeah, so 60s was influenced everybody. Was the music you were creating something that you would have listened to? Um, some of it was, um, some of it wasn't, because I think we we were, uh, in some respects, we were um, made out to be a bit of a um, goody two shoes band, and we weren't. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of the songs we would have liked to have done more rhythm and blues. Um, but there you are, we were young. Bands have more of a say now in what they do and and, um, and how they evolve, yeah. Do you wish that you the band would have gone on for longer than what it did or are you happy with how long it um, No, it would have been nice to have gone on. It would have been nice to have gone on a bit longer, but I you know, we um I appreciated that Dennis would have Dennis wanted to um he had such a fantastic voice. Um, and he wanted to try a solo career. Um, so, yes, I, I, I would have liked to have carried on more with Dennis. So. But there you go. Still had a good... Um, I can look back and and, um, and appreciate what we had. That's all the questions I have for you. So thank you for letting me into You're very welcome, Rose. Thank you, Nan. <laughs>